103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, August 30th, 2020. <laughs> I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have on our show the co-host, Wombat. Hello, Wombat. Hello, and a special shout out to everyone who is still dealing with the after effects of Hurricane Laura. Stay safe. Yeah, for sure. Our guests today are J.W. Kennedy, uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, George, Red Leader, and um, that's about it. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you about them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there was a streaming call-in video show slash TV show broadcasting right here in Knoxville? Has been for over 10 years. Did you know that one bet? I did research this time. I know all about it. Okay, so this is what what it is. Family Matters. Three years? I'm doing the math right now. It looks like it's about 11 years. It's a show called Family Matters. It's an American television sitcom that originated on NBC from September 22nd, 1989. It's known as a spinoff of Perfect Strangers. Did you know that? And it's about a middle-class African-American family living in Chicago, Illinois. It's It's an amazing show. It's an atheist TV show. What? You never told me this. Yes, I did. I told you that once or twice. George, where are me? You're my info guy. You need to tell me (laughs) stuff like this. And uh, we'll be telling you more details about how you can watch it, maybe even get involved after the mid-show break. Uh, If you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and uh, use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Uh, Wombat, what do you have for us today? So last week we talked about death and how it can impact us and what we can learn from it. Today I want to bring it up a little bit and talk about why life is important. But before we get into the topic, I'll throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our own weekly invocation. Arr! If God is benevolent, why do all living things have to die? One day I'll be asked such a question and tasked to resist all temptation to lie. Uh, Amen. That's beautiful. Hey, before we go into our main topic today, let's do a a round of how's everybody doing? Dread, that was a really good poem. Do you write these now or have you have you started writing your own limericks now? I'm I'm going to because I'm running out of material online. (laughs) (laughs) I'd recommend it. I don't I think I think yours would be particularly clever. Yeah, yeah. I think you're gonna have a good time. Uh JW, it's been a while since you've been on the show. I'm glad you're here. What's going on? You're getting hairier by the week, by the way, too. Yes, um, I've decided to just uh, grow up my hair and my beard and see what I can do with it. Um, uh, just started a new job about a month ago, was trying to get used to that schedule. Um, so last week I was unavailable. Sorry about that. But I did end up still reposting the uh, the recording. So uh, hopefully got you guys a few more views. Hey, so. thanks. We appreciate that. And you know what I would yeah. say about our audience small but loving and very good with attention because the average time that's being watched on these radio shows around 40 minutes or so which is insane and as far as youtube goes dread what do you got to add i just wanted to let you know that uh, one of our regular viewers on uh, the live youtube stream men Mm -hmm. is uh, saying good morning everyone Good morning, man. Good morning, morning, man. Like I said, very, very nice, very polite group. I'm happy with this. I don't want to draw in extra hate or anything like that. I want to keep this like an exclusive club of nice folks watching us per week. Uh, Dale, you look relaxed. You look particularly uh, cool as a cucumber. Cucumber. What's going on? Nothing. The only news I have is that I've decided to convert to atheism. Hey! <laughs> Some would say you are already there. <laughs> Almost brought a tear to me. I. But hey, welcome, welcome. Uh, so, George, hey, what's going on with you? How I don't see an arm brace around you anymore. That's right. I'm recovering very well, very nicely. Nice. 
I had happened. that one report that here in the middle of Tennessee, oh, of Eastern Tennessee, between Knoxville and Chattanooga Square, between them, my um, occupational therapist reads the New York Times. Nice, every nice day, and I'm I'm tickled about that. Cool. Really what is it about the New York Times that you find particularly? Nice, because it's not like it's a local newspaper. Like, they mostly talk about world events anyway. So, like, what is the appeal? Oh, it's just that I grew up reading it, you know. And, sure. And, um, and it's, I, I like the paper. I mean, it's, it's been wayward at times mm. and seems to always come back, you know. Nice. It's, it's a paper that I, I'm comfortable with and I trust mostly. Cool. Yeah. It's a point of connection. I appreciate and, it. And, and the fact that somebody here in Athens, Tennessee actually reads it just blows She's me not... away. Yeah. Hey, so Larry, we're going to throw this out at you. How did your biking trip go uh, since last week? Well, I haven't been out on the bike. Uh, except Get on the bike. A, a short run around the in the neighborhood. The you know, down to uh, the Solway and back, which is about 10 miles. Driving Just enough to wake up all the people on night shift and all the dogs. Oh, no, I don't get it out. Stuff. I don't get it out in, at night and I don't keep it out late. Matter of fact, I, lately, I don't keep it out till after dark. So. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. How you been otherwise? Oh, fine. Good. Cool. For, uh, cool. for an old guy. <laughs> Need a haircut. <laughs> now, I think you're looking good. I think you're looking good. Uh, yeah, so. I, I want to throw up the topic of why life is important. Dread Pirate, you want to leave that? Sure. Uh, well, I, you know, like last week when we were uh, talking about death and, uh, you know, sort of our ideas around that, it just, of course, led me to think about um, something I brought up at the time about the, the fact that, that life is, uh, you know, everything has one of it. <laughs> You know what I mean? So yeah, in yeah. some respects, you know, people who, um, you know, make a, you know, make a bit of a fuss, say vegetarian is making a fuss about uh, uh, not killing animals to, to feed themselves and yet have no compunction on stepping on a spider or swatting at a, a mosquito. Or um, a fly like last week, right? Or a fly like last week. Exactly. Needle, needle, needle. And, and that, so what my interest was was to try and discern amongst the group here what uh, what our feelings about why life is important to begin with and and how do we differentiate between the things that we think are okay to kill and the things we don't so oh this is a very heavy topic to okay okay so when i heard first heard this topic i was generally thinking of like hey we talked about death let's bring it up a little bit positive and say like hey life is important but i feel like that could be like a very super level superficial kind of talk because i think most people would agree hey lives are important though there are people who protest against it <laughs> i think we can all agree that everyone's life is just as important as everyone else's and yeah. man what a struggle it is just to let people even know that but uh in general we do have an appreciation for you know being well versus being sick and, and extending the quality of our lives and if we can the quantity of it as well but what do we use as a line to justify like versus like um killing bugs versus like veganism stuff like that oh mm -hmm. that's an interesting topic. could you condense that to a couple of questions maybe we'll go around the table and and ask. Throw um well i i mean oh geez now you put me on the spot yeah like what's me, the main what's the main good first question that you'd want to deal with, with well I, I would really like to get a sense of other people's understanding of of what why life is important to them Okay. Gen, you know, generally and which, speaking, and which um, lives, uh, like yeah. and which animal lives, like yeah, in yeah. some societies they eat dogs. Exactly. And, and, and another question that's always uh, uh, always interested me is, you know, these uh, unusual pairings of animals, where you know a donkey will help a goose or something like that. You know, as a, a lifelong companion, um, what what drives animals to help each other, okay. and does that carry on into humans uh you know and how does that translate that way you know what i mean sure let's throw wow. it up. larry wow. what do you think first as like which lives do you think are most important and how do you distinguish that well, Maybe I, I think in <clears throat> broad general rules if they have intelligence or the more intelligence that they have uh the more importance we give to them mm -hmm. uh if they're 
mammals, of course, they, they mean more to us than, yep. than non-mammals. Non uh, they have higher, higher ranking in our estimation. Um, I think, you know, just, are they like us? Or are they not like us? And how much is the difference? Yeah. Like I will, I will be the first to admit that we have a very human centric point of view with regard to the importance of life, but we are humans mm -hmm. and I have no problem being on team human. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dolphins. <laughs> I like humans more. Go so long so and like, thanks for all the fish. I know. Right. Right. You'll figure it out eventually. But, um, I, I do think Larry's right on the point. Like we, we have a hierarchy of animals based on like their close relationship to us, like intelligence, vertebrate, mammal, all that stuff. And as you go down the list, we find that the further away you are from the classification that leads you towards, you know, uh, homo homo. And how well they relate to us too. And how well they really don't, don't exactly. relate to us at all. The, the further we're like, okay, we can turn them into food. <laughs> they can be food, but these yeah. guys can be pets. These guys can be our best friends. These we can marry, right? Like right. we have that. George, what do you think? How do we determine what, how, what life is so important? Well, um, authoritarians, dictators over the centuries mm -hmm. have liked to make us versus them comparisons to their That's followers. Right. And they, they like to refer to, to the out outsiders as animals mm -hmm. and therefore it's okay to slaughter them and this is sounding know, spookily that, familiar to yeah, something current familiar. yeah yeah not yeah. only that but it also old stuff that you can find that in the bible too or it's just yeah i mean a lot of the well, phrases in the bible are not even for your white suburban guy from colorado they're talking about ancient hebrews and the people they're they're talking against are yeah the people who are fighting against the Hebrews, we've just compartmentalized it to, to belong to us. But George, you're, I'm sorry for stepping on your point, but yeah, you're right. There is a lot of dehumanization by leaders in, in politics. Yeah. I watch my neighbor across the street. Uh oh, um, here we go. Yeah. One day your go. neighbor across the street is going to watch this show and he's going to be like, <laughs> who is this guy? You gotta send him I, the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's talking about me every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I notice how compassionate he is toward animals. Mm. Very loving towards animals. Mm. And yet is very um, much against people he doesn't know. Mm. As an automatic as an automatic response, you know, the stories that he hears on wherever he gets his stories from. Yeah, well, um, Fox News doesn't is, put out stories against uh, Cardinals. That's where I was anyway. going. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, was that? Yeah. Fox, Fox News is. doesn't put out stories against Blue Jays, like, on a 24-7 basis. So, like, you're ingrained to work better with a, a blank slate than you are something that's poisoned water, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I think it's a warped view of um, thinking that those you do care about are under threat from those strangers that you mentioned, you mm. know, so some people think that, I don't know, it's just kind of a combination of being empathetic toward the ones you care about and um, uh, antagonistic toward the ones that are, are different. I, I don't know. It's definitely a, a complex situation. Yeah. I, I agree. I definitely agree. Dale, I'd love to get your weigh in on this. Like, how do you determine what life is important or like worth supporting, worth fighting for? Like, what to you do you use as a determinator for this is something that's important to me that's a living being? Like bacon, I'll eat it. But human bacon? No, I'm not eating that. Why am I eating human bacon? Like, <laughs> do you have like a line? Just like, how do you determine the line? Still frozen again? I no. don't. I Anything's don't. on the table. I have. I have. That's. This is such a general subject that I'm going off in all different kinds of directions. I can say this: yeah. we like our dog. We love our dog. We love the dog, our dog. is sentient. We eat yeah. the pig. The right. pig is sentient. So yeah. there's really no difference there. So it's just a bunch of hypocrisy. And as far as valuing human life, if we vote in leaders who obviously mm. are racist and who uh, are more concerned about the stock market than yep. they are about hundreds of thousands of people dying, then all it is is a big conundrum and mm. it just goes round and round. When we don't well, act on our own self-interest, it ends up hurting everybody. And yeah, you're right. There is really not much of a distinction between pig and dog. Like it's a very facile level of 
of a barrier that we say, oh, this is different from this. It's like, no, they're really basically the same. I've had a, I've had two pet pigs. I've raised two in, as part of 4-H. Worcester pigs. One was a black one, and they knew their own name. And I remember the first day we met the pigs, um, agriculture commissioner's office came to us. It was like, that's, that's Wilbur, and that's Raven or something. It's like, Raven, go here. Wilbur, go through that gate. And the pigs split and just literally did exactly what the guy said. And I'm like, oh, wow, these things are smart and delicious i still eat <laughs> i don't care <laughs> but you know what some people eat dogs too and i'm like i won't i've, I've had coyote jerky before and that that made me sad because i was like i didn't know there were dogs like don't feed me dogs but in the head i'm like why am i making such a weird and big of distinction about this dread you mm -hmm. want to say something well yeah i just wanted to uh like in in grand forks here we we have a, a very large white deal white-tailed deer population mm. And it's been a very divisive uh, issue here in Grand Forks because some people, of course, view the deer essentially as these as animals that ought to be cared for, ought to be fed, uh, ought not to be culled, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the other camp that, that believes that uh, you know they are essentially a, just a uh, an oversized mouse or mite, you know, and they're vermin in their own mm -hmm. in that sense. So again, it speaks to our, our emotional responses to different kinds of life uh, as to how we value them. And well, here, I thought that was a bit touching on the issue there. So. Dred, I'm gonna to touch on this. Um, question for you. Uh, there is the idea of if left unregulated, these deer can not only grow so much that they harm their own populations, but hurt human populations as well and yes. need to be cold. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, a number of years ago, I was, uh, I awarded the contract to undertake a humane cull and, um, you know, a limited success, uh, just because of the sheer number of animals out there. But, uh, you know, out in the wild, for instance, deer, um, always generally have two, uh, you know, two young each spring. Uh, with the idea that attrition will pair that population down to one per uh, per doe, um, but in a city, you know, in a city uh, environment, uh, there's no predation, um, right. and there's a lot of active eating going on. So very quickly, you have essentially an exponential rise in the population, which, as you point out, uh, they're now. Um, the scarcity of food, the competition right. for food that's available. Mm. Um, they're very unhealthy animals. And not only that, they're being fed food um, that is not a, a customary part of their diet. So, yeah, like French fries. <laughs> like French fries, exactly, or, yeah. or lasagna. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to see that is, video, George. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, what What is a humane way of calling deer, Dredd? A bolt gun. So we have ah. these we have these big uh, they're 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 big good rectangular traps that so once they go in they're baited it, the full the trap will collapse upon them like we mm -hmm. just collapse upon them and hold them down and then two bolt gun shots to the head and they're just wow 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 wow. wow. Yeah. Boy, so too like much detail <laughs> for me. In a weird way, we do <laughs> call dogs as well, because that's not a population that we can control. We have like these things called pounds and yeah. humane societies that say there's too many dogs, not enough people want to take care yeah. of them, and they can't be left in the wild. So we call dogs as well. Oh, not to the same order that we do with pigs, but we pigs, if left on their own, would also turn into wild feral boars, destroy our agriculture. And we can't have that happen. So we have to domesticate them. And there's mm -hmm. an infrastructure in place to feed people because we don't have an alternative that can sustain 7 billion people. So like we, we, we have made definitely an impact on earth on a nature, natural level that we have to compensate with industry, infrastructure, and maybe rules that aren't necessarily non-hypocritical, but they are the rules that we have right now doesn't mean that we can't get them better and i think it is worth thought to think about what can we do to make this process at least more humane you know um yeah. i'd like I'll, to say address something that dread pirate higgs said i'm sure he didn't mean it this way but um he said uh, the deer have two children or two fawns uh every 
a season with the idea that one of them will die. Of course, he, he, he's really talking about evolution and evolutionary uh, processes, which there is no goal in sight. Right. Uh, if, if deer were one of those species that only had one child or one fawn uh, in the environment that they used to live in, then these species would have died out. If they had had more than two, then um, they probably would not have been able to uh, sustain giving them, you know, to raising them to adulthood uh, like they do with two that would cost them too much energy in the process and they would have died out as a species. Yeah. Uh, it's just a way of natural selection that has uh, honed them to have two children or two fawns. And it's adapting to the environment they're in, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, for instance, there's um, no idea involved. Yeah. For instance, a deer, you know, in, in a very <laughs> food scarce environment, uh, a, right. a, a doe will actually absorb one of the one of the fawns in it while it's gestating, uh, wow. in order to to sustain itself, um, because a doe, a dead doe, can't bear too many children, right? Yeah, there are some but, real deer consequences with the doe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> J.W. Kennedy, I'm going to throw a question out at you. What do you think about plant right. life? Is plant life important say we could for example avoid having to make burgers out of cows but instead of killing one cow we have to kill ten thousand plants in order to make the same patty like we oh. kill like ten thousand well, lima beans or whatever well i'd have to see the data on that and the you know the the models as to see if they're if we're consuming more than we should and you know like what are the dangers of running out of um food in mm. in that particular aspect but i guess let me throw this out i know it's a it's a biased hypothetical but i'm just saying like what if we could replace protein or animal meat with a facsimile of plant meat or plant protein but we just have to kill way more plants we could do it sustainably but the lives of plants will by orders of magnitude be killed on a more frequent basis Does well i that... think it would be significantly more moral because the plants don't have a nervous system Ooh. interesting Ooh. but they have a life but they have a life yeah, yeah. yeah. do plant life, lives matter but... <laughs> Jay, <laughs> and why and why only and why do only things with nervous systems matter yeah well, yeah i yeah. think we also have to have to consider you know we are a part of nature and we do have a job to win if we if we want our species Ooh, I to love, continue i love so when you're on the just, show uh, it's a it's a it's a hard it's a it's a hard question no that's such a great quote we're a part of yeah. nature and we have a job to win like that that's nature that's totally true yeah Dale, I'll so we've got to find you. that balance of 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 winning and also uh, caring for what's here so i love that that's a per that's a perfect answer dale what do you have you can grow more plants and i rarely hear it talking about uh killing a plant unless you're talking about your rose bush if you're talking about a cornfield my grandpa never said anything about he was going to kill his corn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like we just gotten so used to it that the no do you think it's one another one of those hypocritical um hypocritical situations dale yeah absolutely not plants their destiny is to be eaten, to be consumed. As a matter of fact, a lot of plants... Destiny. Yeah. All right. And some, a, some plants, it's beneficial for them to be consumed because, you know, birds eat certain seeds. And they make parts to be they eaten, don't, but, yeah. but the wholesale yeah. killing of them... To, well, to, yeah, one thing yeah. brings us to mind, my brother uh, used to have an aversion to using paper towels. He says, with the population of the world and everybody using paper towels, every time you, like, pull one off the roll, it's like blowing up a tree. It, that much tr tree goes into air, to the paper. Uh, but he didn't... Uh, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> uh, he, the thing about it is, he didn't consider the trees are a renewable resource, and that people make their living by growing trees so they can make um, paper towels. Um, mm. But it's still at the same time, it gets us back to the, to the question of the val validity and... and uh, of life itself and what rights trees would have. But uh, I just thought that was funny and I thought I'd inject it. I I'd like to interject just one last thing. Um, we actually know for a <laughs> fact that 
in some ways, plant cells are way more complex than any other kind of mammal cell or protobacteria cell. So like we have, so there are things called bacteria and they're inside our bodies even, and they have one more or less um, set of DNA that's in their nucleus. We have two. We have one that's in our nucleus and one that's in something called the mitochondria. You might've heard of it. Right. It's like the powerhouse of the cell. A long, long time ago, mitochondria were their own little tiny little bugs independent. And they were hanging around single cell organisms like other bacteria and they fused. And those cells later became the complex eukaryotic cells that we have in our bodies now. Like every cell yeah, in our what, body what do you, is What do you know about it? Oh, I thought you might mention your <laughs> so, credentials. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm a biochemist. I'm a PhD biochemist. Yeah, sorry, right. sorry. So uh, the cool thing is plants have three sets of cells. They have the right. nucleus DNA, they have mitochondria, and they have chloroplasts or uh, 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 an organelle in their cells that are capable of using sunlight and turning that into energy too. Mm -hmm. They have three different three. kinds of DNA yeah. in each of their cells. Wow. But if an alien were to come down here and they'll be like, I'm looking for the most complex organism. They're looking at us and we're here like shoveling coal into, into like pots so that we can stay warm in the winter <laughs> and, killing and like plants killing plants just so we can eat them. And so like, we need to survive. We will literally die if we don't do anything for three days. Whereas plants are just like, Hey man, I'm cool. I got a plant back there. He's just like, I'm literally just put water on me and put me in front of a window and i will live i will outlive you <laughs> that's all i need and i'm like the aliens are gonna be like these well, are the guys we're bringing back yeah. on the ship <laughs> well, they say that the oldest living things on the planet are pat on our planet is, is they'll be taking all our rose plants. bushes yeah, yeah. damn you guys are making me hungry as hell <laughs> uh, um so uh dread you wanted to talk i saw your lies light up at the mention of destiny was there anything that you wanted to mention about that well i the destiny of plants the, to just be the idea that you know a, a statement can be justified by a word that um doesn't have a lot behind it. Uh, mm. I appreciate that you don't like the word destiny. However, destiny seems to fit here since they can't propagate without somebody eating them or something yeah. eating them. But, but I will a, say inevitable. Destiny is a pretty charged word. They'll, they'll finish, finish. Dread, let them finish. Go for it. it. I will substitute the word inevitable in order not to bothered there you go Much okay hey that's not bad i also say plants are pretty good at propagating without our help uh they just don't do it as organized but they can do it and they have been doing it they just their their fruits don't look as big <laughs> as a result they're like i'm not trying to feed a, an entire human race i'm just making enough for that tiny little bird to spread this one little seed that's all i need i'm very efficient all right guys believe it or not we're already at the bottom of the half hour isn't that crazy wow. yeah it's strange well, larry why don't you take us out Okay, this is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. I felt so ashamed because I was extremely unhappy. And I remember telling my mom and dad, seriously, like this is how I felt.
3.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought at Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is August 30th, 2020. Let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year now with over a thousand members. Nice. You can find us online by searching for Knoxville Atheist or go to knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, by the way, it's uh, if you live in Knoxville, you should still go to the meetup and search for it and join us there. Uh, don't find a group in your town? Start, start one. Start one. one. All right. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, to find them, go to rationalist.org and click on their upcoming events. Early, earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about uh, Knoxville Atheist call in TV shows. Well, it's really more of a streaming online show now, but it was on the TV for 10 years. Right. It's called Steve Urkel is my favorite character. He was really, really uh, good. <laughs> Freethinkers United uh, Coalition of Knoxville online, YouTube streaming. Uh, you can also find those 10 years of archives of the uh, TV show by going to YouTube and search for Free Thought Forum Knoxville. Um, and if you're interested in getting involved in the TV or the radio show, just come to uh, our pages. Uh, there's a Facebook page for either one of them, uh, Rationalist of East Tennessee or AASK, and uh, join us there. Let us know you'd like to be part of the show. With us on the show today, we have the Wombat, uh, J.W. Kennedy, George, Howdy. Uh, and Red Pirate Higgs, oh, and right. Red Leader. Uh, where do we want to pick up? So I want to talk about Netflix because I was watching a really, really interesting movie called The Incredibles. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. There's a really cool oh, sure. character yeah, called Iceman. And there's a really funny scene where he's looking for a super suit. And he's like, looking for a super suit, looking for a super suit. He goes, super his, suit? he goes to his wife and he's like, suit? where's the love? Where is the love? Where is the love? The love? The love? <laughs> Guys, we're gonna go over some fan. Uh, <laughs> I feel love weird from saying. Our fans. Yeah, I feel weird saying that, but like, uh, there's so many great places for you to reach out to us, and I just want to make sure that I have pulled it up. <laughs> Give me a second, let. <laughs> <laughs> my, I'll edit my, this appropriately. Yeah, my but, uh, son in law whenever he gets mail, doesn't matter if it's a bill or whatever, he says, oh, they love me. They write me all the time. They send me love. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, we had some great feedback from Nathan Matthews, who watched our last show when we were talking about death in a good way. Um, Nathan Matthews writes, 
great talk, we can all benefit from discussing death more often. I learned some new things thanks to Dread Pirate Higgs, uh, things like compunction and Jack Kevorkian. Some of my family and friends cling to their religion for comfort in their afterlife. Ignoring that faulty reasoning, uh, my experience has been contrary to this. I had constant fear of whether I was going to go to a good afterlife due to the lack of a consensus on the rules. Now being an atheist, death no longer carries that threatening unknown. Death is simply the end for me. It gives me appreciation for the time that I have. And thank you very much for that comment. Right, that was really great. Right, very good. Dread, do you have anything from our streamers or watching the show live on YouTube? <laughs> Well, uh, Min was uh, had put in a comment about uh, our last topic. There, he said plants are not sentient beings. Besides, How do you know they that? can re Sorry. exactly, and that's a great question. Um, besides, they can regrow while animals cannot. Right, right, right. Um, well, we know I that because they don't have a uh, central nervous system. They don't have any kind of location. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah if you don't have nerves, here's, you don't have feelings. So everybody thing. knows that. It's like mm. um, a way to process them. Ants, um, be surprised. Behave, ants behave like they're sentient. Yeah, but are they no. individually? Yeah, but they—they're like free-floating cells. I mean, the entire hive, don't they? I mean, can't they act as an ent entity by themselves? The yeah, itself. there's actually some pretty individualistic ants that are out there. I would say this though: there's one more love and respect thing I want to go for. Um, I recently did a college lecture for Dalton State College. Uh, that was, I believe, last Tuesday, and I gave a presentation on street epistemology or how to talk to anyone about anything. Um, I'll post a link to that in this YouTube channel. But I also got some really good feedback on that as well from the members in that um, college class that I had over Zoom along with on YouTube. And thank you everyone for those comments. Um, we need to dedicate a show where we just do listener feedback. I think it would be good. Maybe next time, maybe next next one will just be listener feedback, catch up on it. But thank you guys for it. Please continue posting or leaving comments. Uh, we'll go, we'll go over them over the show. All right. So are we, what were we debating on whether or not, um, uh, organisms that don't have a central nervous system can respond to external stimuli. Is that what we were discussing? Yeah. Because that is an interesting topic. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Plants. So, plants. Definite, a lot of plants can respond to external stimuli. If they're attacked by certain bugs, they, they can put out certain uh, pesticide or pest Pheromones. repelling yep. things. Yeah. Yeah. Some there are also plants that, yes, there are also plants that have a, uh, they, trees, I'm thinking of pecan trees right here, where they the they have a, a, a sort of an umbra where they can control the uh, the uh, incursion of other plants so that they can keep more water and all. They do respond to their environment. Plants have to, or they would not have evolved as they would. We didn't have flowering plants for millions of years, mm. but now they have used an evolutionary uh, strategy in order to propagate themselves. And one of the things that here in East Tennessee, we may know of as being very successful at that is kudzu. Is that bluegrass? No, that's the vines that grow over everything, right? Everything. <laughs> Houses, oh, no. other trees, everything, right? They're <clears throat> incredibly invasive plant that just comes out of everywhere. George, looks like you're doing jazz hands. Did you want to say something? I'm stretching. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm doing my exercise. Stretching is great. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think someone had mentioned ants and whether or not they can yeah. um, behave individualistically. There are, so like similar to bees, where some live in hives, there are species right. of bees that don't. There are species of bees that like more or less, carpentry bees, for example, uh, more or less have very small families of just you know, like them, the the spouse, literally, and their and their offspring in little holes in the really? wall, and wow. yeah, and and there are like, of course, the murder hornets that are going on right now. They act in hives, but there are individualistic hornets that aren't necessarily as dangerous, though they unfortunately get killed as frequently as what we perceive to be harmful invasive hornets. Sure. But there are organisms that are insectoid uh, of of that variety that live more or less on their own 
know how to hunt, don't like people, have their own ways of like deterring pests, uh, strategies that they have for attacking their prey. They, there's like compartmentalized thinking on their parts of like, hey, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it home, I'm gonna put my babies in it. <laughs> and I'm gonna like wall off this section, I'm gonna have the babies come out of this dead body because that's the way I propagate. But I have to plan for that. Like I have to like wait in certain areas and stuff like that. I'm like, bees are also really cool too. I just love the fact that there's this animal that we have no problem eating their spit and <laughs> packaging and selling it. And they have a communication that's based, they have a language that's based on dancing that we've already deciphered. And we know like, oh, they fly in, they wiggle this way to point their initial direction. They, yeah. they turn to show how far you have to fly in that direction. Then they vibrate really hard to show, I need four other people to come with me. Like I need four other bees to come with me. I need six more bees to come with me. That direction, wow. based off the sun settings. Like you're so smart. Yes. Fascinating. Sign, sign language would be so much more efficient. Oh, they have six, they have six <laughs> appendages. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I, I don't think we give things that don't have a central nervous system enough credit. I think there's, I mean, it's nice to have it. We can <clears> definitely <throat> understand it better, but mm -hmm. there's some cool things. Derek Pirate, what do you got? Yeah, and I mean, th this is the field I work in is uh, entomology and, and, you know, in plants, uh, I, I'm a crop consultant, so mm. um, and a crop protection manager. So I, uh, a big part of what I do is, is scouting fields, uh, looking for the presence of pests and disease, and also the presence of beneficial insects uh, that uh, may be working at managing the population. <clears throat> so um, I have had the opportunity over the last 15 years to, you know, see sort of in situ how uh, these interactions, um, you know, how, how these interactions are, are performed and just the amazing variety mm. of what, on the one hand, if it came from a human, we would consider it intelligent. Right. But seeing, seeing it on, on the insect level or, or, or on a disease level, uh, that uh, it's not. Um, right. So it, it, it gives me the sense that what we consider sentient or intelligent um, is really on a on a sliding scale um, hmm. that it, that's really hard to dial down to. That uh, yeah. we can't see the chink points on the scale to say, oh, clearly that's intelligent or sentient, and clearly that's not. I think that the scale slides much more smoothly uh, through a range rather than. Uh, you know, discrete um, point by point sort of process. I would argue one that the, the scale isn't serving us as far as like rationally determining what sentience is. And two, I would also say there's no real scale because no one knows what it's like to be a bat. Like we just have to assume yeah. based on the behavior of a bat, what that yeah. bat's thinking. And in some species, we, we totally ignore their intelligence like pigs and stuff and sure. just go ahead and eat them anyway. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, and that's scary too. <laughs> so sometimes we know pretty well and we just don't care. <laughs> yeah. Right. But yeah, I'll, I'll give my shout out to plants. There are still things that plants do today that we are reverse engineering in particular, like when I was doing my, my work. Um, there are redwood trees that are capable of drawing water from the ground up multiple hundred feet straight up into the air just from the capillary effect like we have yeah. a very well understand good understanding of how the capillary effect works and there's a point where gravity will offset the benefit of that force like there's no way that you can capillarily force water up that high yet plants figured that out and we are still trying to figure out how that's possible like is it like a is it an ion charge that they're displacing like what's going on inside this tree mm -hmm. <laughs> that's doing this and i i guarantee you there's some really great research articles out now that's still like we don't know how trees work <laughs> they must be actively doing something that when you kill them they can <laughs> they don't do anymore <laughs> that's right exactly. so like, I'm raising my hand. <laughs> george what's up what's up well I'm getting hungry listening to all of this, and so go get some food. What, yeah, what have my, a fifty-fifty burger. Yeah, what my <laughs> yeah, mind let's just talk about food is, for the next four okay. Minutes. So, what am I going to do when I go to the supermarket? Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's the bottom line here. Yeah, you know, I can tell you, I've been trying to eat more healthy now that I've realized, you know, I am getting older. It'd be nice if I put less chemicals in my body, like less candy, less processed stuff like that. Um, I don't think I'd go full vegan, but I can definitely change the kinds of meats that I'm eating. Like, the, I can stay away from like the sausage and pick more like fish and stuff like that. But, Have you um, ever done any research on the Mediterranean diet? 
No, talk to me about it. Like, um, I, I read this book and I recommend it to everybody. It's um, Eat, Drink, and Be Healthy by, I, I may be getting the name wrong, but the name, the name of the book is right, but the name of the author, I might get wrong, uh, Dr. Um, Mitchell Willits, I believe. Mm. And basically it's all science-based stuff. He divides the, you know, the bull crap from the truth. And, um, he is very supportive of Mediterranean, um, or plant-based diet. He's plant-based himself, but he still says the benefits of chicken and fish. And that's simply, um, Mediterranean, you got high, high in, uh, monosaturated and polysaturated fats, um, low in sugar, um, low in bad carbs. Um, this is a lot of, a lot of good stuff. And he, he, he's basically most of the book is, um, supporting why, uh, the Mediterranean diet is one of the healthiest diets and how it be- matches up with what we've learned in science and long-term studies, which is important. What I'd be interested in seeing is if there is a anti-killing diet, like I would like to talk to the Jainists and see if they figured out a way to just eat things that are naturally produced from animals without calling them like milk or fruits, stuff like that. Dread, what do you have? Soylent green. Soylent green is from soy. You have to kill soybeans to make soylent no, green. No, no, no. Soylent green. Charlton. Oh, has you mean just people? Just people. people. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, not the product. Okay. Well, there's a product called Soylent Green. I eat dead people. You could (laughs) eat. So you could, what if you ate already dead things? Would that be moralistically any way better? I think we're off on a real, real wide tangent. I want to talk about something that I want to bring up after the half of the show. Um, I want to do a quick round table on things, the weirdest things you've heard. I know this is a bit targeting, but the weirdest things you've heard from Christians that now, now that everyone here is an atheist, you can look back and be like, what? <laughs> what? I believe that. And where I would you, throw. Where does one begin? Yeah, I know. I'll throw mine out under the hat. Um, I remember when I was in high school, I was telling my, and I was a hardcore Christian back then. Well, as hardcore as you could be when you didn't know anything aside from just trying to impress your parents and stuff like that. But um, there was a show called Powerpuff Girls, and I, I made it a well-known fact about me that I did not watch the show because there was a bad guy in Powerpuff Girls who looked like the devil. And he had little lobster hands and a red face. And I was like, I don't watch this show because there's the devil in that show. So if people were talking about it, like the new movie coming out, I'd be like, oh, you like Powerful Girls? Well, I don't watch it because there's the devil in it. And I had my little Jesus lanyard and everything. Oh, <laughs> the cringe. It made me feel so bad. All right. So I'm going to put people on the spot. Um, I wish I hadn't done that. Well, yeah, I watch the show now. And it's an amazing cartoon, by the way. But uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, is there anything that you would say craziest thing Christian says, even if it was you, even if it was you at the time? Uh, well, actually, I was just on looking at uh, some of those crazy signs you see outside churches. Ah, okay. And and so, you know, we've just, of course, passed our, our you know, 100 degree plus temperatures. Too hot to keep changing sign. Sin bad, Jesus <laughs> good, details inside. <laughs> That's good. I love it. I love it. Yeah, straight to the point. Uh, Larry, I'm going to throw you under the bus. What do you have as like this one? Of, just it doesn't have to be the most, but like well, recently, just, I mean, I'm just going for the most popular, the most I've heard, okay. uh, and the craziest at the same time. Why do you hate God? Ah, uh, so, you know, I always turn right around and say, Why do you hate Spider Man? Or why do you hate? Uh, no, why do you hate Spider Man? Santa Claus. Santa okay, Claus. you could say because <clears throat> how can you hate something you don't believe exists? Yeah, I mean, and yeah, they yeah. they haven't even thought that far. Exactly, and that I'm just trying to get them to maybe start take that first step. Also, for them, it's easier to equate you not believing with you just hating the thing that they believe, right? Yeah. Like that yeah. worldview makes it a little Making easier for them. Part of the L group, right? Yes, yeah. Not only that, but there's I found that I have less reasons to hate other fictional beings than I do God. Like if I were to hate, if God existed today, like you just proved it, I would not like that being if it was exactly as described in the Bible, but I don't Mm -hmm. have a reason to hate things that don't exist. So like (laughs) by default, I don't, (laughs) but if you did exist, I wouldn't like you. (laughs) So I've I've put my head on the shelf, but I'm not applying it right now. There's other things I'm doing more that I have to deal with on a daily basis. Uh, JW, I'm going to throw this out at you. Craziest thing you've heard from a Christian or even if it was from you, what do you got? Well, um, back when I 
I, I was religious. Um, one of the things that for some reason, it could have been from because of childhood trauma, it could have been from well, fill in the blank or just culturally or what I was used to, the self-degradation of um, many religions, especially Christian religion. For some reason, the songs that I was attracted to, there was a lot of self-degradation in the songs and the sermons. And I, mm. I just look back now of things that once brought me chills like a drug. Now I look back and think about them. It just turns my stomach like it's just yeah. so, like it's so obvious that it's rooted in self-hatred and unhealthy and it's just and it's rampant yeah in, you're um, right. abrahamic religions especially oh yeah so my mom has my mom's Jehovah witness she has tried to turn me on to her persuasion uh she showed me like their music and it's really really old it's like the exact kind of thing you would get from like a an old Pentecostal church that played music off of cassette tapes. It's like one of those kinds of genres of song, like the worst kind of Christian music. And all the lyrics are just, I'm so sick and you healed me. I was weak and you gave me strength. I was bad and you were good for me. I suck and you were amazing. <laughs> like, yeah. Why would you sing that? It's this yeah. like, really amazing twisted, grace. abusive relationship with an yeah. imaginary deity. No doubt. Yeah. Why would you make kids sing that? And that's so bad. Like or washed in the blood you know, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's really messed up. Anyway, but that's great. That's great pull, JW. Um, George, you were born an atheist. So you, oh, I'm sorry, of course you were born an atheist. Everyone was, but like you never really had the, uh, <laughs> the religious brainwashing. Uh, have you still heard weird things from Christians that made you go like, huh, whoa, what's that all about? Especially now that you're in Tennessee. Oh, of course I have. What do you got? Um, I was in the supermarket before my operation and um, wearing my mask amidst a few people who weren't. And Sure. Uh, coming toward me in the supermarket was a woman also wearing a mask. And she said to me, are you having a blessed day? And I replied, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the words just flew out of my mouth. Whoa! It happens. It happens every once in a while that I I I fail to censor myself. Did you follow it up with? And I'm walking over you. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, she said something else. Um, she said, "Well, I hope you do later." You know? <laughs> she sounds like a sweet lady though yeah i you know i am and that's it i mean i, I yeah. just i don't know how to respond to this stuff. i think of it as like if i was in roman times right like if i took time traveling back to roman times and i was going to go yeah. on the on the river or walk on a on a on, on like next to a coast or go on a boat and one of the locals was like beside and be with you like he's giving me just his world views best shot at me saying hey see you later man like that's how they compartmentalize it so have like that's day. how i sort of deal with it it's just like you're just telling me how i have a good day in christian in, in christian language but yeah it could be offensive in the sense like i just got over christianity i know how much little tenure there is in that in terms of truth so like it sucks for me to hear that but i can understand someone who's just from a culture being like but give about that. It's like, oh, okay. He's, I'm in India. Like they're gonna say that. Like that's cool. I'm, 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 I'm cool with that. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I, I haven't gotten used to this yet. You know. Yeah. It, I, I don't know if I ever will. Hmm. Well, I have a sister who's Muslim, and she will tell me things like, um, "Salam." Uh, there's like a lot of sayings. Oh man, why can't I remember any of them? Anyway, there's there's sayings that's like, "God willing, God be with you," stuff like that. And I take, I will say them back to her because for me, like, it's just not vanilla ice cream anymore. <laughs> it's just like, well, oh, well, this is kind of new. <laughs> but I don't, you yeah. know, I don't believe it. I'm glad you know I don't believe it, and we can share these things back and forth as an atheist and a Muslim. I'm happy. Maybe, that. maybe that's what that. we have to do. You know, yeah. Maybe that's maybe that makes the most sense. I mean. As I see it right now, we are probably already living in a police state here in we've the been United there. States. Yeah, we've been you know? there. And, I'm glad white and people I, are understanding that now. <laughs> yeah. We've been there for a while. Okay, well, that's cool, man. Yeah, it's and, not cool, but it is however, here. <laughs> however, you know, what my, my point is that, uh, well, maybe we're there and we're going to be there for a long time, you know. And, I hope not. Yeah. And, but, but. What the, what I'm reflecting on about that is that intellectual people have existed and and f 
you know, survived under dictatorships in the past. So I guess we're all going to survive. Maybe. We'll do the Hopefully. best we can. Yeah. And it won't yeah. be without fighting yeah. for, for good causes. Dread, what do you have? We got um, eight minutes left in the show. One, what do you think? Well, one thing I was thinking about is uh, one thing I challenge people on is uh, following a sneeze. Bless you. Sure. I say, what do you mean by that? Yeah, if you got the time for it. Also, I, I have no problem first letting people know that I'm an atheist and then still saying bless you just so that they know like, oh, atheists say it too? Now I'm not going to assume Christians are the only people who say it so that when I hear bless you, I still have to guess on whether or not they go to my church or some other church nearby. Keep them thinking. Well, I may assume that you're asking <laughs> like to say Satan, Satan to bless or, them. W- praise the seven. You can say that too. I'm, I've been getting <laughs> to some Game of Thrones stuff. <laughs> Dale, um, I want to save the best for last. I know that you've actually been compelled based on things that you've heard from Christians to even write a book on the subject. Um, not to, not to force your answer, but like, has there been weird things that Christians have said that made you want to respond to them in some sort of published format? I have several examples in the book, but you has asked for an example of something a preacher has said that is uh, odd. Sure. Uh, just recently, within the past three months, I think it was about three months ago, one minister was talking about the deaths from coronavirus, and he said, well, death for us, for Christians, and for me, death is an old friend. And... Uh, Wow. I was thinking, wow, so death should be an old friend. Oh, by the way, three of his congregation died shortly thereafter. So if that's the sort of uh, 81% of the evangelicals went for Trump, and if this is the way that they're going to ignore the stuff he's doing by, uh, by just being hypocritical about their religion, maybe that's a good idea that we should uh, notice that at least. Mm. You know, and also I'll throw this out as we head to the end of the show, have you made any sort of writing, like a paper thingy, like a thing that you do this and there's like stuff in it? Like, is there anything like that that you're responsible for that you put out on the world? (laughs) Dale, or someone who hasn't listened on a weekly basis. I don't write anymore. He doesn't write anymore, so don't go what to his website. Have. We don't have to talk about it. What's, what's, no. the, what's the thing that you wrote about miracles? If Jesus was a magician of his time, my book describes how he could do his miracles. Yes. From the, Actually, I checked out from the place. coming, Even coming back from the dead, even yeah. putting the, the ear miracle, the wine to water, the walking on water, yeah, all of it, the Bible right. clearly says, well, Larry's yeah. read it, the Bible clearly mm-hmm. says how the tricks were done. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, oh, wow. It's found at. And where can we find it? Uh, howjesusdidit.com. Nice. Very, Very cool. Good. Jay Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? Well, uh, we live stream this show uh, Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, depending on what it is. And it's found on Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. Nice. Oh, damn it. I missed it. It's already happening. Hey, no cursing. Oh, my gosh. Look at you. Wordy dirty. Guess who's on mute for the rest of the show? Hey, J- uh, Larry, okay. what is going on? What will do you next? J.W. Kennedy, what do you got? Uh, I'm, I got J.W. Kennedy on YouTube and uh, Speak Your Beautiful Mind on YouTube. Um, you can follow me at J.W.K. Hates the News on Twitter, and you can call, follow me at Your Beautiful Mind, spelled U-R, on Twitter, and that's the Speak Your Beautiful Mind um, page, which is content coming soon. I know I say that every week, but I promise you uh-huh. um, it's coming. Hey, content. I'll, I'll be the first to tell you all. So. You don't owe content to anybody. <laughs> I'll say that first I feel like I do. Yeah. You don't. You don't. You don't. You can put out as much as you want and people will keep wanting more but you're doing this out of a love you're doing this out of your own hobby and when it comes out it comes out and that's right. it, your audience should respect your time as much as you yourself right? right so yeah keep an eye out just subscribe in the meanwhile and if when it comes out you'll be ready for it um my channel is called let's chat um, I recently put up my lecture uh, for Dalton State College. It's now a series. I did a talk with them last year for a different class. And I'll probably be doing a, a, a similar lecture for Dread Pirate Higgs when he does, when he starts his teaching as well. Um, and then now that 
planes are beginning to open up more, at least in the United States, um, I will tentatively, you know, a couple of months from now, start doing more long distance in-person chats. So looking forward to that too. Um, George, what would you recommend aside from the New York Times for people to uh, check out, learn stuff about? What's something well, cool? Well, I've been, uh, on, our, on our Tuesday meeting, I mentioned a book called American Nations. And I think Canada's in there too. It's about the 11 different dominant cultures that have evolved and come to the United States and part of Canada as well, um, sort of forming the diverse, often warring people who we are. Nice, and, very uh, cool. What's the name of the book again? I, American Nations. American and Nations. And it's about, as yeah. a um, uh, matter of fact, um, while George is talking to by, himself. <laughs> written by Colin Woodward, cool. published Colin in 2011. Woodward. American Nations. We got a couple of minutes left in the show. Larry, what's cool about you? Did you write a book? Because I really want to oh, know I what did. atheism mm -hmm. is all about. And I don't know where yeah. I can find out what atheism is all about. If is there something I can that, put into Google to find out where atheism might, is and what it's all that. about? Yeah, <laughs> if you could Google atheism, what's it all about? You might come up with my book. Yeah. It's available on Amazon. And, and did you, you ever give me a copy of that book, by the way? Like, how long do I have to know you before I just get a free copy of that book? Uh, <laughs> another week. <laughs> and you can also use a search engine which does not surveil you, such Ooh. as... Um, Duck, Duck, Goose. Duck, Duck, Go, and ah, yeah, um, X, X Quick, Very which cool. is now called Start Page. Cool. Oh, Thanks. by the way, uh, howjesusdidit.com is free to read online, uh, and I recommend Thanks. it highly. Thanks. Yeah. Um, be sure to visit uh, my blog at digitalfreethought.com. We have all of our radio show archives there, atheist songs, articles on the subject of atheism. If you'd like to listen to prior shows, all of our podcasts are available through iTunes, Stitcher, luminarypodcast.com, or digitalfreethought.com. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to us via email at askanatheist at a uh, knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer my future shows if you're watching this on youtube be sure to like and subscribe and be notified when new episodes are posted and remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it enjoy your life george you had something to say before we finally say bye you are going to somebody else's hell no, we all are, according to the religions <laughs> of the world. <laughs> sure, Join us again next Wednesday at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio for another Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Until then, say bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Stay <laughs> rational. Bye-bye. Yeah.